Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Science Thursday. In today's episode, we're gonna continue our water series and today we're gonna talk about water chlorination. So let's dive right into it. Now first thing you have to understand, water if untreated, if uh, contaminated is basically equivalent of bio bomb. Basically water is a universal solvent. You have to understand it. Water does not discriminate. You can mix lead into it. You can mix uranium into it. You can mix plutonium into it. You can mix basically cholera into it. You can mix uh, decentry into it. You can mix typhoid into it. It simply does not care. It will carry whatever can mix into it, which translates to almost every single thing. So that creates a problem and that these three diseases are the big diseases. And there are hundreds of small diseases that can affect people and kill in hundred to thousands of them so you have to understand all those things come by all those what we classify as water borne illnesses you can check the link of uh, wikipedia down below uh, those kill people in millions not 100 not 200 millions as in like almost a small country worth of people is killed every year and uh, According to WHO in 2015, the confirmed death, not a, about infection or illness, that is in billions. With infection, basically in uh, terms of confirmed death, like you got infected by water, now you are dead, it's in upwards of 800,000 people per year. And it's, uh, it's fixed, it's like barely going down because we haven't figured out any proper way to do mass water treatment. So you have to understand it. Water is very dangerous if untreated. It's not a matter of luxury or choice or something like that. You will die if it's contaminated. So we have to take very serious precaution. So this brings us to the very crucial point. We need chlorination. Now, you, you think about chlorination, you think about modern water treatment, and that's absolutely true. However, you have to understand this technology goes back to upwards of 100 years. Now, in 1875, people started to figure it out. In 1890, some uh, attempts were made. But in 1905, something big happened. Basically, typhoid epidemic hit basically Link, Lincoln Town in England. So a lot of people died and people needed some way to solve this quickly because like whole town could have been killed if it would have gone on continuously so at that time they introduced chlorine water treatment and that stopped it like literally people were went from dying hundreds of people and then like oh people are safe here people are living here like you know or not all our graves are completely full so this is the first time large-scale demonstration of chlorine was done basically like chlorine is a basically almost a fixed way like you put chlorine biological uh, hoo-ha cannot touch you so after seeing the success of uh, basically this system, installation in 1905 so uh, usa is like in 2000, uh, 1908 they also started experimenting it by the time 1920 came along almost all major cities had chlorination done into it and this is a world health organization map from typhoid fever now you can understand the red part is very contaminated yellow part is like okay but uh, yellow also means there are not enough people there so all these things combined you can easily see usa is not there now usa is the third largest population country in the planet so how the heck they are safe chlorination this is what i'm trying to say like chlorine and biology they do not mix basically no matter which biological hoo-ha you have basically from bacteria protozoa to algae to uh, some other things it will not cross basically water contaminated water chlorine no biological accident can happen it's almost like it's not almost like it is like ultraviolet so this thing and we've been using it for one century it's not a small feat like if there is a technology that is time tested this is one of them this is why we use chlorine so how do we utilize it in uh, like actual uh, municipality treatment now again the description can go in long detail i'm gonna simplify it uh, in three simple stages now same way ozone is generally added to dirty water or quote unquote raw water this is also done in the same way how do we add chlorine there are hundreds of ways sometimes liquid chlorine is used sometimes gaseous chlorine is used sometimes some agents are used which will become chlorine if added to water so hundreds of ways are there and you can read a wikipedia article in detail for that so we basically add uh, chlorine to raw water now why raw water it does not suffer the same consequences as uh, basically ultraviolet ultraviolet needs clean water this on the other hand does not need it and it also actually benefits from having a dirty water because once you once you have let's say iron uh, other things that it will break down basically bacteria and virus and protozoa it will also help in coagulation same as uh, what we call as ozone treatment so coagulation will help you to filter out much more efficiently if you did it to raw water so once you mix the chlorine you have to allow it what we classify as contact time basically same as uh, how in ultraviolet you have to have a radiation amount that it must be there same goes for this so uh, contact time is very simple you must let it bare minimum of 20 minute of time so it can act react destroy and basically sterilize the water now 
can you shrink that time no can you increase the time absolutely there won't be any side effect of it like people generally give a lot of basins are there where chlorine slowly mixes and stirs and does its job for more than uh, 30 minutes or 50 minutes some places they take extra care but uh, you must not let it go down below 20 minutes then we remove the byproduct. This is critical aspect because chlorine uh, creates a lot of byproduct uh, by a binding with other things and b by destroying a lot of uh, biological matter. You must filter it out. Now this is the first stage of your uh, municipality system. They put the chlorine. The chlorine breaks down everything and everything is filtered. And then after that primary filtration, then you remove the byproducts. Now byproducts could include uh, basically heavy ions, uh, ammonia, and all that because it does break down a lot of chemical things also. So it is a dual sword. Basically, it take care can take care of biological contaminant and chemistry contaminants it will not do anything about physics contaminant that's the easiest to figure out so that's why we use chlorine it can take care of two things basically two birds by one stone so what is the problem why everybody hates chlorine the, the moment you type chlorine people like facts and myth uh, the cancer of this cancer of that why the heck people hate it now first simple thing it triggers our baser instinct basically taste and odor of uh, chlorine water is bad flat out flat out it's bad so it flat out triggers an emergency response in your body is like dude something is wrong with this water even though you could have a scenario where i give you one glass of contaminated water that is very sweet and one glass of treated water but with has chlorine odor you will not uh, basically try to drink chlorine water why because it stinks it inherently is triggering a response in you that it is not safe you you will literally die by drinking contaminated water so that is very baser thing this is not uh, something that we can go past by like this is uh, fundamental this is firmware level issue then it protects against reinfection now you might be like okay that's a good thing why the heck i have pointed that in red that is the problem because to do this we generally add chlorine after the filtration process after we have cleaned the water water is absolutely safe for drinking we reintroduce chlorine into it so it can protect against a contamination during the plumbing system basically if you have a pipe and i'm talking large uh, pipe system basically let's say you have a city water treatment plant and it's the pipeline uh, pipe length is like 500 600 kilometer you must make sure that it does not get recontaminated and does not have uh, any contamination traveling backwards bacteria virus specifically so adding chlorine makes sure that nothing can enter it now problem with that is if uh, you act put raw activated chlorine into the system that means the byproducts will be also there so byproducts are generally classified as disinfection byproducts dbps now you have to have specific filter for removing that which was not done simply because they had to reintroduce uh, chlorine in the water which is active they could not put uh, disactivated uh, chlorine it wouldn't do anything you have to have activated cover now this does protect the pipeline it does make sure that even if let's say some tap is contaminated with uh, let's say e coli or anything like that it won't travel back because chlorine is like you shall not pass now that also creates a side effect it creates a lot of uh, extra byproducts that byproducts into thms very complicated name that's why i'm not gonna say that but basically this causes cancer then we have haas this also causes a lot of uh, issues which includes a uh, brain deprivation basically brain oxygen deprivation the effect of this would be more or less like you are being drunk so these two things are very dangerous now this is the part where uh, things go from uh, basically real science to voodoo science is that people are uh, treating chlorine as it's like guaranteed cancer. Here's the reason. The sole reason we've been using chlorine for one century is that we know for a fact that chlorine water will not kill you faster than any ba bacteria and virus. Simply the answer, the choice for every municipality is very simple. They put chlorine in your water and make sure it's biologically safe. AKA you can drink it and you're not going to die in one month or uh, then deal with the consequences that water is contaminated a little bit not too much but a little bit that over time and over time goes for very long for some people it will never have any side effect or for some people it will trigger cancer reaction in 10 to 20 years so what will they choose of course they will choose the uh, chlorine because 10 20 years is much better than dying in two years and this does prevent against uh, recontamination which is very critical you can filter out the water as much as you want with uh, ultraviolet ozone and uh, uh, ro but if recontamination occurred during the pipeline or the whole pipeline can be contaminated you may be sending as clean of a water as possible but everybody would be getting it, uh, infected by a disease or a protozoa or things of that nature so for this reason we have to use chlorine now what about the cancer risk how real it is well uh, because we have been doing this for one century there is serious guideline about this now if you are drinking chlorine water basically you can flat flat out tell that it has chlorine flat out tell it has a basically a white color substance into it please use a filter now some places the the 
uh, once they re-add it, they add too much of it. So uh, that scenario, please use a filter. Generally, uh, activated carbon filter will take care of you. But uh, if you can't find that, use RO filter. But you please filter it out. You should not supposed to drink that. And if that is happening regularly, please contact your municipalities like, bro, you are adding too much chlorine. It's not supposed to be that much. And if you are doing treatment plant uh, like right next to you, you can easily take care of the byproducts. You can remove the byproduct, and that at that case, it will be perfectly safe. In pools, swimming pool, how many biological things are there? Like people are there, so you have to make sure their body is like literally contaminant carrier. So they have to make sure the chlorine is there. Otherwise, the one kid, one infected kid could infect the whole uh, theme park. So they have to use chlorine. So this is why we uh, chlorine is like a dual-edged sword. We have to use it. There is nothing that comes even close to power of this. And basically long-term rising. Basically you put chlorine, it's like I'm here, I can take care of it at least for a few days. Now in terms of ozone, it's like, yeah, I'm here, I'm gonna destroy everything and done. It's out. Like my job is done here, it goes away. So that means the reinfection can easily occur. Chlorine prevents that. That's why we use it. And in terms of cancer, what is what would you rather have? Typhoid, which is gonna kill you in one week or cancer that may kill you in 30 years or maybe your body is flat rejects it so simply you won't even get cancer this is why there's a lot of problems with this however the primary trigger is that taste and odor you you will not know you're not supposed to know whether the water has been treated by chlorine or not because the recommended level is like three parts per million that's like that's milliliters of chlorine like you, you get more chlorine from salt so you have to understand this this is why because it triggers our uh, innate sensor like something is wrong with this water that is why we are so uh, opposed from it and not to mention if you are swimming in chlorinated water uh, swimming pool your eyes will go red your skin will turn reddish it is a disinfectant so basically it's disinfecting us which means killing us or our same skills so what can we expect in the future now i told you like all time and time again we simply have to use chlorine for reinfection protection now if you remove the pipeline and you are like okay we're gonna use bottled system yes you can bypass it but unless you are doing that there is no other alternative at this point in time and in terms of any modern chemical additive that is like you know better than that no flat out no people have been trying hundreds of combination it simply does not even come close to effectiveness of of chlorine so there is no water alternative now in this whole series video series that i'm talking about water treatments and all that we keep i keep referring to this core aspect we do not have a magic bullet where you're like okay this is water treatment plan this is one process that we do and done other than evaporation there is nothing else like you inherently cannot do anything to water that's like yeah i'm gonna remove everything everything biology physics chemistry everything you simply cannot do that and on top of that even if some magically you figured out to do that you still have to reintroduce uh, basically sodium or iron or calcium into the water because distilled water is bad for bad for us so this is the reason why we introduce so many multiple stages of water treatment because one contamination can like flat out kill a city. So chlorine is our uh, best friend at this point in time. Now, is it the perfect? No, but what are you gonna do? unless you start selling bottle water everywhere so this was my presentation i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please leave a like button and if you didn't like it don't worry about it you can press dislike button i would urge you to press it twice to show me your extra disappointment and please leave a comment because i reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching